We don't oppose project labor agreements in the private sector. If the contractor decides in the public sector, the best way for me to get this project, the best way for me to manage this work, the best way to, to present a good product to the taxpayer is through a PLA, then by all means, voluntarily uh, negotiate a PLA. What we are opposed to is the federal government saying on every project in excess of $35 million, we've decided um, without any evidence, without any support, without any data, uh, that all of those projects should be conducted under a project labor agreement and requires the contractor to negotiate that agreement, typically under the terms demanded by the, the labor unions. That's what we're opposed to. I'm Stephen Sandher, CEO of the Associated General Contractors of America. The, the Biden administration's proposal on mandated project labor agreements, first of all, it reaches a conclusion that every project in excess of $35 million automatically should have a collective bargaining agreement, notwithstanding whether there's available union labor in the vicinity, notwithstanding whether the the result of the project labor agreement forces a contractor to use trades that they ordinarily wouldn't use, regardless of whether it upsets local collective bargaining conditions. You're basically leveling the labor costs for all bidders on the project. Uh, and not only that, but this requires an employer to bargain with a union or a group of unions for a project labor agreement as a condition of that employer getting the, the project. You're forcing the players to reach agreement, regardless of whether that's in the best interest of the project. And who has the leverage in that situation? Does the employer? No. Uh, does the union? Absolutely, because they know that contractor needs to have that agreement in order to be able to pursue the work. One of the rules of federal procurement law is that you are looking to improve efficiencies and economies in government contracting. And in most cases, with a, with a mandated project labor agreement, you're going to fall short of that objective. In 99.4% of the time, the government decided not to use a project labor agreement. This was a tool they had in their toolbox. They have a responsibility to the taxpayer to make sure that economies and efficiencies in contracting are met. The agencies they work for decided overwhelmingly not to take advantage of this tool. Mandating project labor agreements on federal contracts is challenging for union contractors in a couple of ways. It upsets local collective bargaining conditions. It more than likely will require a contractor to use trades they ordinarily wouldn't use. And even though a project labor agreement technically expires at the end of the agreement, having a contractual relationship with those other trades could expose the general contractor to a pension withdrawal liability with those trades that they ordinarily don't have a collective bargaining agreement with. It's obviously bad for open shop contractors because it essentially bars them from competing for federal work. Now, as a practical matter, they could go and negotiate agreements with unions and, and have a project labor agreement, but in doing so, they give up some, some of the management advantages that they have. It would require them to pay into union health, welfare, and uh, pension programs on behalf of those employees, even though those employees likely would never uh, meet the requirements for receiving benefits in the future. We filed a lawsuit in Louisiana, in the U.S. District Court. Uh, we're challenging essentially uh, two things. One, President Biden doesn't have the authority to require project labor agreements on federal projects. And secondly, even if he did have that authority, the requirement falls uh, far short of federal procurement laws. We expect to be successful in court and we're doing this in conjunction with our uh, Louisiana AGC chapter. Uh, AGC represents both open shop and union contractors. Uh, we are uniquely positioned in being able to understand the challenges that both, that both types of contractors face uh, with these mandated PLAs. Uh, we're trying to be a voice for uh, everybody in the AGC, regardless of their uh, labor posture. 
We think we're an honest broker on this issue, and we think we've got uh, the law and the facts on our side.